Untamed. Welcome to the podcast, people. Martin Devlin, Lachlan Moore, iOS. It's only sport. The highlights of today's show, which he had live on the platform between one and four. And it was one of those days that you're in the middle of the radio show then. What? You serious? That what? Fisher Harris. He's coming to the he's coming to the Warriors. He's replacing for the win. At the end of, Oh, that's brilliant. That's kind of how it happened, right in the middle of the radio program. So we cover that today, of course. Special guest on the show, Steve Hansen, Shag. Out of Japan, his Toyota club have got Ian Foster on board as assistant to coach. So how did that all come about? Plus, Joey Manu, what a coup. And what you're about to hear from Steve Hansen is something that we didn't know, that that they didn't go looking for Manu. Manu's agent came looking for them. As well as that, we went stateside and we talked about Caitlin Clark, this remarkable young woman, the star of collegiate basketball in, in the US, who's joined the Indiana Fever. And she's she sold out all her singlets before even bouncing a ball on the WNBA basketball court. We celebrated the legendary caller, John Sterling, 85 years young. He's retired from the Yankees after 56 years in the job and also 5,600 or so games. We talked Champions League with Miles Davis. Uh, we even had the, the Melbourne Rebels general manager on as well. We had a big action-packed show. And we start the day the same way, every single time. Tablets and handles, I gather my flock. It is time for a sermon. I am an expert on the NBA, Lachlan. Let's go to that mountain talk. We live in an amazing, amazing world, and it's wasted on the crappiest generation of just spoiled idiots. <laughs> The NBA playoffs up and underway, tipping off today with the play-in tournament. Basketball is incredibly popular here in New Zealand. You already know this. The domestic leagues taking off, the women tripling their pay packets, for example. The Breakers regularly selling out Spark Arena, playing numbers are through the roof, especially at young people age. And the young folk just tend to love this sport. All of that very evident in the number of singlets that you'll see. Any major city in the country, the amount of memorabilia that young folk wear, that they're proud to wear, that they're proud to support a team in the NBA, even if they don't know that much about them. The fact that names like Wemby, Steph, LeBron, uh, I'd even hesitate to say perhaps not as popular as, as any of the most popular New Zealand athletes, but, you know, I mean, they're certainly right up there, aren't they? And probably just as recognisable. Two Western Conference play-in games today. That's New Orleans versus the Lakers and the Kings versus Golden State Warriors. Tomorrow, the Eastern Conference. Heat at 76 and the Hawks at Bulls. Saturday, New Zealand time is the final play-in games to decide the eighth seed. And Sunday, we're all underway. And I'll call it now. I'll be big and brave. I'll call it now. Denver, the Nuggets are going to go back-to-back. To be the champ, you've got to beat the champ. And nothing that I've seen so far this season suggests there's another team in the competition capable of beating them over seven games. Now, they're the second seed in the West, which means... OKC are the top seed, and if they get through to the Western Conference final, well, they'll have home court advantage. But if they don't, Denver are going to play four of every seven series games at home at altitude. Well, mile high anyway. That's what they call the football stadium in Denver. Nikola Jokic is a triple-double every game that he wants one. And he's not a, a stat patter. He's genuine. He's the best player in the league. Whoever wins has to go through Denver. I don't think you need to know too much about the NBA to agree with that. Devlin calls it now. The Nuggets go back to back. Devlin. <laughs> we want, we want the Sousa. Information. Yes. Yes. Information. Yes. You won't get it. The platform. David Dome from the Phoenix. Talk about Macy Fraser in just a second. And remember, after three o'clock, don't forget, uh, Sir Shag on Joey Manu. Is this the biggest coup for rugby? Stealing one off league since... Oh, Wendell Saylor? Rugby ceiling one off league? Yeah. Rugby, well, well, it hasn't happened yet. Joseph yeah, Swali? Yeah, but I mean, it just, you know, it's... Rugby ceiling one off league. Mar- uh, Lodi Takiri? Uh, Marika, 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 Mar- Marika Kurumbedi? Yeah, I mean, Suliasi It doesn't Zutabali. happen that often, and this guy is one of the superstars oh, of the NRL. You think, though. You're going to club rugby in Japan, soft, mate. But harsh. Oh, I'll ask Shag all about that. Uh, Wellington Phoenix and Football Ferns were rookie Macy Fraser. Has created women's A League history, attracting a record transfer fee to join Utah Royals in the US National Women's Soccer League. Uh, Warriors four Jazz Tavanga faces up to two months on the sidelines after suffering a hamstring injury against Manly. Others ruled out this week for the Warriors include Ford Maratani Akore, 5'8 Luke Metcalf, interchange forwards Dylan Walker and Bantiafo. A few injury troubles for the Warriors to contend with at the moment. 
Uh, as you just sort of talked about there, Marty Kiwi star Joey Manu, uh, also playing for the Sydney Roosters. Sydney Roosters star has confirmed what we pretty much all knew, but he's confirmed he will switch from league to rugby when he joins Japanese side Toyota of Blitz after the CNRL season. Uh, Rory McIlroy says he will play on the PGA Tour, uh, quote, for the rest of my career, as he quashed rumours of making a big money move to live golf. How much did they offer him, Lachlan? Well, there's a report that said the full-time major winner had been offered $850 million. Wow. That's over a billion New Zealand. You can turn that down? Yeah. You can that, turn down a uh, bill? US dollars it is, yeah, to join the Saudi Arabian back to circuit. Okay, here we go. News Talk ZB are phoning, and they've just offered Devo a billion dollars to go back to his old job on News Talk ZB. Hey, dear leader. I'm loyal to you, dear leader. I turned it down. I came back into the studio, and I said I want to work on the platform. Yeah? Really? Well, it's easy to say it when it hasn't happened, it's isn't it? It's easy to say it. Uh, Champions League this morning, we had the second legs of a couple of quarterfinals. Dortmund beating Atletico 4-2, which means they advance 5-4 in aggregate. Barcelona were up 1-0, which meant that they were up 4-2 in aggregate. They got a red card and ended up losing 4-1. That was at home, at the new camp. They lose 6-4 in aggregate, Barcelona. Incredible. That means Barcelona, uh, excuse me, PSG... And Dortmund will play in the semis. The other semi will be between one of Bayern and Arsenal against one of Man City or Real Madrid. Those two second legs are tomorrow. Uh, Rafael Nadal has enjoyed a winning start at the Barcelona Open as he returned from another long-term injury in what could be his final year before retirement. Surfing legend uh, Kelly Slater has called time on his uh, career on the board, on the wax, Again? on the waves. Again? Has he retired before? He retires more times than Sam Whitelock. Michael Jordan. He's retired a hundred times, he has, yeah. Who was that, Brett Favre? There you go. What an annoyance he was, wasn't he? Hey, he's gunslinger. That's right. Won a Super Bowl. Yeah. He was was big for the Vikings until the championship game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless said about that. Uh, NBA playoffs, well, play-in tournament today. I guess the plan is to get into the playoffs, so the playoffs haven't really started. But game one is underway. The Pelicans and the Lakers, it's in New Orleans. These two teams played the other day. The Lakers killed the Pelicans, which secured them the eighth seed, but it meant that they'd have to play New Orleans again. Well, history is repeating itself. The Lakers are up by 14, halfway through, uh, excuse me, 13, halfway through the, uh, well, it's not halfway through. It's four minutes to go in the third quarter. Uh, Later on, the Kings and the Warriors playing at 2 p.m., the other two playing games are tomorrow. That's what's making news, madam. Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. <laughs> the platform. Macy Fraser. Remember the name. This young woman who's been one of the standout players for the Phoenix women in the A-League this year has just signed a dream deal to go to Utah and play in the women's equivalent of the MLS Major League Soccer. It's a hell of a deal. It's also very inspiring, I'm sure, for every young... Well, both... Female and male footballers in this country. Well, this is on the back, of course, with the Phoenix of Gabriel Sloan Rodriguez signing a three-year deal with a 16-year-old. So a couple from the academy just making their way in the world. David Dome from the Phoenix. Welcome back, David. Hey, Marty. How what a going? great story this is, mate, isn't it? Oh, look. What a, it, it, Macy's just been fantastic from the minute that she joined the academy uh, to going through the first team. She's been such a bright light for us this year in terms of what she produced on the on the field of play. And look, honestly, she wasn't one of the best players in the in the A League W this season. I don't know who is, uh, and she's been fully deserves this move to you know, uh, one of the two big leagues in the world. So just absolutely thrilled for her. Yeah, and just in terms of the transfer fee, does the club get the whole lot of that, or does the A League snip some? How does that work? No, no, we get uh, we negotiate the fee with the club direct, so the with Utah Royals direct, so we we get the majority of that. So there is a there are some um, uh, fee for having introduced solidarity and training compensation, which we think is actually a very good move, which means that the, her her junior clubs or her amateur clubs that she's come through will get a a, a separate fee that the Royals pay, but the, the the majority of the fee comes to us. It's been a great week for you because obviously uh, Gabriel as well, the young boy, we were talking about him yesterday, Sloan Rodriguez, he's only 16 and he signed a three-year deal. It just says everything to me about what you put in place a long time ago, David, which is paying dividends, which is your academies. 
hundred percent, and that's always the difficult stuff, right? Is making that big investment up front and <laughs> hoping that you, you back yourself, and hoping one day it comes right, and you manage to shift a few players on, and they go on to bigger things elsewhere. Which has always been the strategy for the club, to be fair. And you have to, you know, admire the owners' vision that they go. And this is how we see. We think we can make this thing work, and it's the right thing to do is to provide a pathway for young players, you know, boys and girls now. And they can see, look, you can, you come to Wellington, you join the club, you join the academy, and there's there is something at the end of the at the end of the tunnel where you go, we can end up playing in Europe or playing in the United States and, and, and playing on the world stage. So, yeah, just, yeah, we're really excited about how well the academy's going and how it's how it is starting to generate some real returns for, for the owners, but not just the owners, the players who, who come through the, those channels. In terms of feel-good stories, Finn Sermon and then these two young people, it's, it, it hasn't been a bad week for you, pal. No, it's been, yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Finn Sermon, he got... He, Correctly was credited with the goal. Yes, which was, yeah, that was uh, his goal yeah, every day Oggie. of the week. It's his yeah. goal, mate. Come on. Oh, even if it was an Oggy, I think in, in every uh, Wellington Phoenix history book, it would go down to the sermon scoring in the 95th minute, so, regardless of what uh, APL or uh, whatever they're going to say officially. But yeah. Just right. I mean, how great has Finn been? You know, could, you know, couldn't really get a game last season, but it's played every minute of every game this season, and you know, there's a, there's a whole lot. AP is the same. You know, Alex Paulson's come in. Ollie Sale didn't resign with the club, and we went, okay, well, AP's next off the rank. Let's give him his chance. And again, I, I, I saw some stats yesterday. AP is rated the best goalkeeper in the league. Congratulations, uh, in terms of goals conceded, and in terms of what they call chances denied from the opposition. So. And, uh, and there's a whole, whole heap of other kids. You know, you look at how Ben Old's gone this year. You know, Lucas Kelly healed at left back, and you know, pushing Sam Sutton. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see. I and mean, we talk about the academy. All these kids came through the academy, and look how well they're doing. Hello, and uh, you know, a huge big payday and a bubble crowd coming with the finals game at home. And we all remember what happened in ten eleven when Ricky was in charge, and, and just what you got then. So yeah, look, I, I just wanted to ring you up, say hell, well done. It's a, it's a great week, and also just in terms of. You know, I, I was thinking when I read uh, about Macy today, thinking, you know, I remember being at school at St. Pat's Silverstream. We weren't allowed to play soccer. We were poofs, of course, because we played soccer. We weren't allowed to field. We yeah. had to play in rugby jerseys. It's come a yeah. long, long way. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, moaning about that side of it, but I just think what a long way it's come that now you can be a young person in New Zealand and these two are creating the pathways and showing you that you can have a dream and you can achieve this at the highest levels. It's brilliant. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that same sort of generation as you, Marty, where you, you grew up when you went through squads, Palmer's were boys high. And that yeah, was, yeah, well, you used to play us. Like you used to play us at Silverstream at rugby, of course, mate. That's right. That's right. You know, and, you know, people looked down their nose at football. It wasn't the proper sport, but you know, it was sort of tolerated. But, you know, it was the first 15 and the first 11 were barely even, you know, given the time of day. But, yeah, and, and now you look at it now, we're like, these kids that are coming through the academy and going on to the first thing, they're household names and, and you know, the football community and in the sports community. Um, and the people are genuinely excited about the talent on show, you know, AP and, and Ben Old. And, you know, look, let's just be realistic. There'll be a number of, of players probably within our first team and in, in the, on the men side who probably won't be here next year because they'll go on to bigger and better things and that's it's just more proof of the fact that, uh, it, that the system is working and the process is working and you know people are coming through us and going on to bigger and better things and remember everyone said we we're going to be bottom of the table this year we had a lot of feedback so we're at bottom of the table and, and look, look, and one of the reasons was we lost all those players, and we'd have to play a whole lot of kids. And Chiefy said we're going to play the kids and the young players, and look how they've stepped up. Wow, people! Here we go. What news? Are you listening, Big Bob? Are you listening, the fans of every other side other than the Warriors? Are you listening, Toby? Uh, you got the release there, have you? Um, Zane the Warrior Hollock's online at the moment. What does the release say? Well, Welcome. just quickly, uh, I've got a release on the Panthers website. Penrith Panthers have granted James Fisher-Harris a release from the remaining two years of his current NRL contract, which is 2025 and 2026. Fisher-Harris approached the club this week with a request to return home to New Zealand following the 2024 season on compassionate grounds. Out of respect, they've agreed to release him. And on the Warriors website, it says they have signed... James Fisher Harris on James a four-year deal. I said Nathan's. Fair. I'm sorry, my bad. Um, I'm just so you know, the, the, the news comes and over. Are you there, Zane? Oh, mate. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Jesus! I've been driving, and the man uh, Lachlan lets me in on the good news. God, Christmas did come early. Well, uh, is this? I mean, I was going to say, is this the final piece of the puzzle? No, because we lose one. I mean, imagine getting him this year. If, if, if Fisher Harris was joining this year alongside Adam, I'd say. And it's the Premiership right now, Lachlan, is what I've been saying. This guy is the perfect replacement, is he not? 
Oh, mate, I don't think we could have asked for anyone better. I think you're, you're looking at him, Payne, and Haas, and probably Tino are the only guys comparable. But I think as far as culture, um, you know, the, the type of player we need, James Fisher-Harris, my God, that is absolutely close to the best signing we've ever had. I, I, do, I, can't, I can't help but agree with you on that. This is gobsmacking news, isn't it? If you've just joined us, people, sit down for but, a second because you've got to be bowled over with surprise. Don't you love the New Zealand Warriors, mate? Every single time we've pulled out a big signing like this, no one's had a word of it. They don't leak. Where where was this? None of the journos had this story. No, mate. This no. Is and look, and look, and normally there's somebody in Australia gets it and always gets it. Obviously, before anyone in New Zealand gets it. I mean, if this was rugby, everyone would have known about this last December. Uh, he's pulled out the old compassionate clause, which Adam used as well. And I always raise my eyebrows with that. I mean, the thing is, if a player wants to leave a club. I like the Alex Ferguson thing. If he does want to be here, you've got to get him out of there, right? I oh, mean, I'm 120% in agreement with that. I'm, you know, I know it's sport and people like to treat it differently, but any job where you have a contract, you have clauses to get out of it, even in business-to-business contracts. Um, so they've got to come up with some kind of reason like that. But we've had it done to us so many times, so great to get one back. Man, this has really got me, got me amped sitting there thinking of, you know, having some conversations with a lot of people about the depth at the moment, we're really struggling. And you start to panic on top of that next year. Jeez, this is a, an injection. And this this shows that the Warriors can attract top players. Uh, we've had a text in here saying Kiwi's captain's going to be the Waz captain. Is that nat- is that just the natural thing? Do you think that's just hand it, hand it straight over? No, nah, mate. I mean, Tohu's going to be captain here until he's gone. He's got one more year. So, um, But after that, you'd like to think so because he must have a good you know, four or five years left in him. Mm. Um, oh, he's a beast of a player. That. I mean, it's just the uh, best possible. I tell you what, there's going to be a whole lot of guys driving home tonight are going to walk in the front door in the best mood ever and you know, going to be greeted and saying, oh, you did have a great day at work. Uh, Fisher Harris is signed. Fisher Harris is signed. <laughs> Imagine having a wife who's a Warriors fan, mate. You'd be on tonight. <laughs> 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 Lovely talking to you, my boy. Thank you for answering the phone. Cheers, brother. Steve Hansen, back on the show today, talking... Two things. Ian Foster, his old mate. Remember, they were the coaching duo that won us a World Cup in 2015. Fozzie back in his first role since coaching the All Blacks in France at the World Cup last year. He's going to be a vice or assistant coach to Steve Hansen at Toyota Verblitz. And they've also got Joey Manu coming there next year. How well is he going to go in rugby? How long is it going to take for him to actually get up to speed with it. We saw Roger struggle. Is Joey Manu going to have to face the same, kind of getting used to the rules and everything else? Where are they going to play him? What do they expect from him? Steve Hansen. Steve, so you coach together with the All Blacks, you win a Rugby World Cup. It's like that's the top of the mountain. It doesn't get any bigger than that. So how do you, how do you guys sit there and, okay, what, is it a, do you feel like it's a step down? Is it a step sideways? How do you put a perspective on that? Oh, no, it's just totally different. Uh, from a, it's still a mountain you've got to climb. Like people underestimate how good or how tough the League One competition is here. There's some of the best coaches in the world, there's some of the best players in the world here, and uh, and then you're dealing with um, a whole array of things like your company. Uh, do they have the foresight and the ambition to want to be pay for the, the talent that you need to be a good rugby team? Uh, do they have the strategy in place? Do they have the facilities in place? Uh, then, you know, there's three bands of players. There's, you're allowed three internationals, um, cap players, then you're allowed another uh, <coughs> 10 foreign players. But the strength of your team is how strong your Japanese men are. And, um, you know, there's a category A class here, which is foreigners that have been here for longer than five years. And the teams that have got a lot of those uh, seem to be really strong. So, and strong Japanese um, players. So your bench is always going to be important because <clears throat> you can only put four foreigners on at a time. And it, it's all a big strategy and a and a game how you can bring your team together. And it takes time to do that. Um, now Robbie's probably been very very the most successful up here in doing it. He's he's been here for years and. And um, because of that, he's got a good system going. Uh, Toshiba having a good year this year under Todd. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, it's an interesting but a difficult place to coach in. So that's got its challenges. And, 
once you get involved in the club, it becomes part of you, and, and course, you yeah. become part of it. And 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 then that's where the beauty is. Like you, you die for your club, don't you? And and uh, you want the best for it. So um, I'm excited about you know putting the tool back, belt back on myself and and doing some coaching, and rather than just a director and. Yeah, I'm just really excited to be able to do it with Foz. The unmistakable voice of Steve Hansen is with us. Now, you know, obviously that, you know, the way that Ian was treated in New Zealand, I think was despicable. Uh, most of the mass media, uh, just uh, very gutless and cowardly the way they're dealing with him. Uh, New Zealand rugby hanging him out to dry. I know that we're kind of putting words in his mouth, but was there any, was there any apprehension at all from him when you talked to him about, oh, did he say, oh, look, I'm sort of, I don't know, I, don't, I might just sort of lay low for a while, or was he really keen to get back into coaching? Oh, no, he he he's always said, and I've always known that he he's a he's a lifetime coach. He loves it, uh, so he's always going to get back into it. And um, I, I guess <clears throat> you have to ask him this, but I, I get I think you know having the opportunity to come back and work in a place where he knows how much we've done to get things in pretty good shape to be able to go to the next step and knows that he knows one if not two of the people he's coaching with Nathan White he knows well as well um, he knows it's a pretty safe bet so um, you know, I don't think he had any hesitation of about wanting to get back into coaching I mean you know, how he was treated how he was treated he's dealt with that I think with Unbelievable class and totally got agree. On with it and totally agree. It's not like how he was treated is not his problem. The people that have to face that are the people that treated him like that. And and uh, you know it's it's going to be interesting because all those people treated him like that because they wanted the guy that's in there now and Scott. And uh, I just hope they don't turn on Scott if things don't go well for Scott. You know they've got to make sure they treat him better than they treated Fozzie. Let's talk about Joey Manu then. And I read some interesting comments from you out of the Australian press about this. You said it's probably a good idea. He's up in Japan away from all the prying eyes and everything else. Yeah, I mean, there'd be mass media interest if he was playing, obviously, here in New Zealand or, or transferred to rugby and was playing in Australia. And I guess Foz has got the same. That's a bit of a beauty for him as well, away from all the noise out of New Zealand. How exciting for you as well, getting a player of that calibre at the peak of his powers? Yeah, well, it's, it's awesome. I mean, um, you know, to have have a player like that get his agent to ring and say look would we be interested in him is a great honour privilege uh, to know that he trusts us enough to be able to help him and guide him to become the rugby player that he wants to become um, and you know that's our responsibility now to make sure we do what's right for him and the team and um, you know, I'm looking forward to working with him he's, he's a wonderful athlete uh, by all accounts, a wonderful man and great character. Uh, so you know, it'll just be a privilege. So did I get that right? So did his agent shop him around? It wasn't like you guys went after him? Uh, well, Peter Brown and I know each other quite well and he he approached us. Would we be interested? And, in, you know, we, I couldn't say yes quick enough and I just didn't think we'd be able to afford him and... But, you know, he's coming for all the right reasons so, and it's not about money. So, uh, you know, that tells me, again, a lot about the character of the guy. And, uh, you know, when you get someone coming over that's hungry, that wants to achieve something in another sport, who's got as much talent as, as Joey's got, then, you know, you've got, you've got all the ingredients to make a great cake, haven't you? So... Uh, I'd be very, very surprised if he, he doesn't succeed in what he wants to do as a rugby player. And that's being all black, is it? Oh, well, I think that's for him to talk about. It's not for me to talk sure. about. But uh, I think he wants to be the best rugby player he can be. So Yeah, OK, um, two plus two. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a New Zealander, so you can put two plus okay. two plus one. I think I can figure that one out, sir. I think I can just about make yep. it. Yeah, OK. Um, um, wing or fullback, where, where, where are you thinking straight away? And is that initial position where you would continue to play him or are you open-minded about that? I'm oh, really open-minded about where we play him. I think, like, his skill set in league is suited to fullback, wing or centre, so that's the starting point. Um, 
fullback's probably the position that would be easy for him to start with because uh, he's, he's, he is really, really comfortable there. Um, he's got the ability to carry ball, which suits the game up here. But I'm, I'm flexible, and I want to stay flexible and, and just work with the athlete first and work with him and and work with our own team and, and uh, you know see where he fits in best and where he can make the, the easiest transition. And as time goes on, it might we might see a positional change we may not you know he might be that good in the one we put him in that he stays there but I think in cases like this you have to be really flexible and think back to you know Brad Thorne uh, when he came uh, to Canterbury we started him at number eight but the you know we found the best position for him was lock so um, if you'd played lock and then gone to number eight maybe you could have been successful there too but he's definitely you know an out and out lock when it came to it so we started him off in the wrong place and that taught me a lesson that you don't want to put them in a place where they have to be organizing and doing a lot of things because they're trying to learn the game uh, at a really high level so put them in at a level where they can just use their instincts um, and learn at the same time and his instincts are really really good at fullback so I'd probably envisage him starting there and then we'll play around with what goes next. To hear the full interview, download the platform at the App Store. Via Platform Plus, you can go back and listen to the whole show and all of the interviews in full. We need to talk. Your favourite game. We need to talk. Which is called Lachlan What? Uh, what is more chance of happening? Say it with Vim, say it with Vigor, say it with What is more chance of happening? Yeah. I present two separate scenarios. Yes. You tell me what is more chance of happening. We're talking NBA basketball. Denver. Win it all again. Or Miami do a Miami from last year, make it all the way through to the final from the play-in tournament and go one better. What is so more chance Denver happen? wins it or Miami wins it? Yeah. Denver, absolutely. Yes! All right. Denver win it all again. Or OKC, the fountain of youth, do an Orlando a la Shaq and Penny, and they actually knock out Denver and make it through to the NBA finals. I'm not saying they win it but they win the Western Conference. What is more chance of happening? Denver win it all, OKC win the Western Conference? Denver win it all. Oh, give them a chance, mate. I'll give them a chance. I think, I think if, I think if Golden... Oh, they're, they're, the top, they're the top seed. Yeah, I think if Golden State win this game now against Sacramento, that means they then play the Pelicans, right? And then my guess would be they beat the Pelicans. Um, and I think they'd beat... The Thunder. I don't know about the Pelicans or the Kings, but I think the um, I think the Warriors would. I just look. They're a really good young team, but I the 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 biggest issue. They haven't got much size. They're quite small. They're small a, ball wins these days. No, no, seriously, they're, they're really small. Um, and I don't like the whole thing. Like, oh, they're young. They don't have any playoff experience. I still think teams can go and make some noise, but I I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't no, think the Thunder. Right. Are yes. well, what is more chance yeah. of happening? My Nuggets go back to back on the back of Nikola Jokic. Or the Golden State Golden Oldies pull it together for one last ride on the Ferris wheel. A fifth championship in what would be 10 no, years or 11. No, sorry, that's, that's not happening. That's not, that, D- D- Denver will be there. There's no, there's what, it will just give them a smidgen of a chance. It's Clay oh, Station. It's, 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 Clay it's, Station. It's Steph. No, it's they're not. Draymond. They're, they'd have to get past Denver probably to get to the finals and, they, and then they'd have to beat probably Boston in the finals. Draymond should be playing in the NRL, shouldn't he? I mean, the amount of crap that he dishes, he should be playing in the NRL. I mean, that, that, with all the drama from him this season, the fact that the Warriors are, what, 10 games above 500 is pretty incredible. What is more chance of happening? Denver do go back to back, win it all again, which is the last thing the NBA wants because it was like the Texas Rangers winning MLB and just... <laughs> Ratings went through the floor. They want a big city team to win it. But anyway, Denver win it all again. Or my Milwaukee Bucks get their superstars fit. No, from Giannis no, and Dame no, time. No. The Dame. Yes. Giannis, Giannis has a calf strain, which is always niggly. They're going to rush him back too soon, so his impact's going to be minimal, I think. Uh, the Bucks, I think, are in absolute disarray. I think I think they could lose in the first round. They've got Indiana. I think they could absolutely lose. No, what? Yeah, no, what? Yes. What is more chance of happening? The Bucks lose in the first round of the playoffs, then Lachlan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, who did who did Miami knock off? Like Miami knocked off the Bucks last yeah, year. Yeah, the though. Bucks in the first round because the Bucks were the top seed. Or our LA and your Lebroni Bron Bron with AD Big Men Basketball comes back again for one last ride on the Ferris wheel, and the Lakers sweep 
clean through the Western Conference and end up going to the finals. Mm, so the Lakers get to the finals yes. or the Bucks get swept. What has more chance of happening? Yes. Or the Bucks or losing the, Bucks the first round of the playoffs. Round. Yeah. Lakers, Lakers get to the get final to the finals or the Bucks losing the first losing round of the playoffs. What has more chance of happening? Probably Bucks losing the first round. Yeah. I've you been. just don't rate them, do you? What's wrong with you? I just I know, I just think I I think that they have been all over the place all season. Funnily enough, they were better when they had the old coach who got sacked. That's right. Because Giannis didn't want him on the team anymore. That's right. Uh, Defensively, they're not the same, having lost Drew Holiday. Dame Lillard can't defend. Um, Their players outside of their two or three best plays seem to be a little bit lost on court. Granted, I heard this on a podcast. This isn't my my, uh, observation, but there was a moment in a game where... You know, Brooke Lopez uh, has to close out a player who gets by him because he's huge. He's a seven foot centre, Brooke Lopez, and the player was a guard. And then the other players don't, there's no help defense, there's no oh, recovery. Okay. So these guys just aren't dialed right. in, they're not really doing yeah, their job, particularly it. in the defensive. Okay. I honestly think yes. it's, a, it's a fractured locker room, I reckon. All right, one more before we start talking about a guy called John Sterling, the legendary Yankees caller who's called it quits after oh, 50 plus years in the business. What is more chance of happening? Denver win it all again or Boston? who are the bookies' favourites. They are the overall number one team. They actually do what they couldn't do last year, make it through to the finals and actually win it all again. What is more chance of happening? So there's a couple of things to note here with Boston. Just quickly, in the East, they were the top seed, 64-18 and in the final record. They finished 14 games better than the second seed. 14 okay. games better. The all second right. seed with the Knicks. I understand. The gap of 14 games, by the way, is... More than first through 10 in the West. These 10 games, excuse me, 11 games between the first seed and the 10th seed in the West. Boston have the fifth best points difference in NBA history. The four teams who've got a better one than them in NBA history all won championships. But Boston also, by the numbers in terms of fourth quarter scoring, are not that great at all. So if they find themselves in close contests in the fourth quarter, they might struggle to put teams away. I think there's more chance that the Nuggets uh, win the championship. Devian. The platform. Blah, 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 blah. Champions League, blah, 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 blah. Golden Point, blah, 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 blah. Hurricanes, blah, 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 blah. Warriors, blah, 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 blah. We're talking to Miles Davis. We do every Wednesday. All right, Champions League, mate. Now, if you'd asked me this morning, what the hell would I know? I'm saying that Barcelona are going through and Atletico are going through. You watch these games. Um, I would have said Barcelona going through, Dortmund going through. Um, but the two uh, just unbelievable score. I mean, what was it now? Eleven goals between <laughs> between two two games where you normally at this stage of competition between these sort of sides you expect it one nil, two nil. Unbelievable. Um, all gripping. The Barcelona game um, against PSG. Barcelona. I mean, it's only twenty nine minutes, guys, but they looked in control. They're at home. They've got 90-odd thousand there. They're, they've just, you know, they've got the players. They've got the lead. They're in control. Arahu gets sent off. It totally changed the dynamic. And Barcelona went into their shells. They looked at it down to 10. We've got a goal lead. Let's, you know, try and hold on to it. Uh, and that is one of the most dangerous tactics in the game of football. And so it proved. They just, once PSG got their tails up, once they equalised with Dembele, they just went on and on and on and on and on. And uh, to be honest, by the end of it, you almost wanted the final whistle to come just to spare Barcelona any more pain. The um, the Dortmund one was really interesting because Dortmund were up 2-0 really, really early in it. I thought, oh, this is going to romp away. And then suddenly Atletico score, and you think, oh, well, they could almost at least bore their way through for the rest of the game and go to penalties. But Dortmund, and then came it all, and then Dortmund somehow managed to find a second win and kick away from them. But two cracking games, and I honestly can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah, Man City playing against Real Madrid. That's in Manchester tomorrow. Bayern versus Arsenal. Remember, two all uh, between the Krauts and Ars and Man City three, Real three from the first league. Miles, so there was 18 goals in four games in the first leagues. We've got 11 and two here. It's almost five goals a game. Now, you and me talk, and we bemoan the fact that football is about passing the ball back in short corners and everything else. Well, what the hell's happening here? This is the Champions League, and everyone's going for it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe there's been one of those sort of black holes or twitches in the, you know, what was it, the um, something line? What was it in Back to the Future? That was it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, whatever course. that thing was, I think I think that that's happened now. Um, it's not the space. I can't even think of the thing. But something's happened there that's totally flipped it on its head. I can't explain it. Um, it might just be one of those freak uh, occasions where they've decided, well, this is a good team. I can't afford to just hang around and wait for it to happen. I can't make it happen. And they keep making it happen. And then that opens it for the other team who have gone behind and they've got to come back and do it. I mean, don't forget. Yeah. It's not the first time. Do you remember when City were, were two goals up against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu a few years ago um, and looked like they were romping their way through and it was coming up almost to injury time and Bos- and Madrid scored twice and then go on and, and um, kick on and win in extra time. So City just blew it then. So it has happened before. But honestly, I don't know why... But all I'll say is, long may it continue, because I'm sick to death of this dull, I don't want to lose, don't lose possession, let's not try and score. All right, pants down right now. You might as well give it up. You're hosting the Warriors this weekend, you're St. George. And just let people know, the reason that you support St. George is because... Oh, because it's my patron saint, isn't there it? There you go, okay. Are you allowed to say that this day and age, mate? I support I mean, you're going the Warriors, get... no, but I support... I support the Warriors as well. I was at the first game in 95 against Brisbane. Um, old Snatchy, you know, our mate Snatchy, yep, yep. he had a, a corporate tickets and, and flew me up there and we went and watched the game together. Um, a magnificent occasion. And I love the Warriors. I love them. But when they play the Dragons, I can't stand them. I want them to get smashed. I want them to miss every. I want them to drop the ball. Uh, honestly, you see the stick the Mad Butch has given me over the years at Mount Smart when, when the Dragons have won. Uh, even worse, actually, when the Dragons have lost. Uh, but this year... I've been blown away by the fact that the Dragons... I mean, we had a couple of games where I thought, oh, yeah, here we go, normal service being resumed. But they've actually kicked on. And the Warriors, after their first two losses, they've turned it around and they look the real deal. I think this could be a cracking game. History dictates the Dragons win. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think yeah, if, if you look statistically yeah, yeah. over the years... Never win there. Dragons have, uh, you there. Know, mm. uh, have, got, have got the edge on them. But I just, I couldn't either way. And I'd like to say, oh, I'm a winner both ways, but I'm not. Because this week, I'm a Dragons fan, and I'm going to be gutted if we lose. Well, three wins for the Dragons, three losses, three wins for the Warriors, one draw, obviously, and two losses. And let's talk about that. There was a couple of Golden Point games last weekend. I've been having various social media wars with people about this. And I know that we're old school, and, and people say, you don't understand, sports entertainment. Yes, sport is entertainment, but sport is emotion. That's why I love it. That's why you love it. And I think that what they're doing is they're stripping that emotion. When you walk away after a draw, and it doesn't matter what it is, football, rugby, it could be league or anything, there's a different set of emotions than you get when you win than when you lose. I don't mind feeling gutted and dissatisfied at a draw. It's part of the experience, isn't it? Sport is entertainment, and, it, and, and and I agree with that. But does that mean there's got to be a winner? Sport's also a reflection of life. And it gives you lessons in life. And sometimes there's winners, sometimes there's losers. And sometimes you walk away on a even. And I don't see anything wrong with that at all. And if you've got two sides out there that have battled away and end up level on the scoreboard, so be it. So be it. Share the points, move on to next week. You've still got the title to go. You've still got the league table You've still got the playoffs, so why on earth would you worry about, oh, no, we have to have a thing. It's almost artificial. No, no, that's what I think. It's contrived. Yeah, look, and, and what it does if, is... If it's a it, knockout, if yeah, it's a knockout, fine. fair enough. But, but yeah, if it's it, not, it turns why into, would you want it? Yeah, it turns into just, uh, to me, this grubby drop goal fest, which I just think is anti the actual game. The tight five. Five separate sporting topics, roughly a minute or so on each, and when the bell reminds us, we go on to the next. You'll be happy... Yeah, Lakers have beaten the Pelicans. Who wins out of the other play-in games, Lachlan? And is this reward for you actually playing my Denver Nuggets first round of the playoffs? Macy Fraser, as you heard from Miles in the last hour, you've heard it on the news there. We had David Dome starting the show from the Phoenix as well, smashed the transfer record for an A-League woman going to go and play for the Utah Royals. It's just a great story, this story, isn't it? It's just like yesterday, Gabrielle Sloan Rodriguez. Two fantastic stories to come out of the Phoenix concerning young players this week. And a third one being, of course, Finn Sermon, who scored the goal to put the Phoenix into a top two spot in the men's A-League on last Friday night. 
Champions League results. Can either of these two win it that have got through now? And how surprised are you? Barcelona losing 4-1 at home. That's a Man United result. Uh, Joey Manu. How's he going to go then? Is he Look, I, mean, I I hope that he becomes the world's best winger slash centre slash fullback. Where, where's he even going to play for a start? Or is he going to get lost and become like Lodi Takiri and Wendell Saylor that his best rugby was never rugby. His best rugby was, in fact, rugby league because played for the Wallabies, hardly ever got the bloody ball. Rory McIlroy, rumoured to be offered 700 and something million US, about a billion New Zealand dollars to go and play live. Uh, apparently he's turning it down. And doing the rounds on the internet at the moment, and I, know, I, I just shouldn't indulge in this kind of stuff, but st- there's just this kind of conspiracy theory group which has decided that pandas aren't real and there are no real pandas and that they're just people in panda suits. And I've watched some of the videos out of those China zoos and I think there might be some truth in it. Let us start, though, with the play-in tournament and the NBA. Lachlan, you got Denver next, pal. Yeah, your nuggets. Your nuggets. Come to Daddy Yoko. I thought you were a Lakers fan. Well, I, 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 I am for this particular game, and then I go back to my homies, my Denver Nuggets, for the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Best of seven. Good luck with that. Because four of them are up mile high. And last year, what happened when we played you in the playoffs? When I say we? We. We? Yeah, it was a 4 nil sweep. Okay, to be fair, I mean, I mean, like a sweep looks like it was totally one-sided. Look, they were close games, those four games. Oh, At least, they uh, were close. two or three of them were oh, pretty close. close. Well, so, would, so when it's close, do you get an extra point in the loss column or not? Just, it's still a loss though, isn't it? I mean, it's really rich coming from a guy who doesn't watch the NBA. I watch enough of it, mate, to know that my money's on Denver. Next game up, Golden State versus the Kings. Who you got? You got the Golden Oldies or you, 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 got, you got the young boys lighting the beam? Uh, Golden State. I think. Golden I, think, State. I think Golden State will win this and I think they'll then beat the Thunder in the first round. Wow, they're going to do a bit of Miami Heat last year, right? Macy Fraser, does this story not put a smile on your face and how can it not? I think it's a wonderful story, isn't it? It does, but it's... a it's um, The selfish side of me as a fan of New Zealand football team, so by default I'm a Phoenix women's fan, is that the Phoenix women are losing one of their best players, if yeah, not their best player. We're a feeder I know, country. That's what we but are I'm selfish. Sport. I'm a selfish sports fan. So part of me is like, oh. But then, no, the the... Nicer, more mature side of me is no. This is this is what should be happening. These young players should be going to these academies out of high school, being trained up, building up, playing in the A League, um, and then getting picked up by bigger clubs around the world. That's what should be happening. I would love to do the metrics, the optics, and all of those buzzwords that we get these days, and find out after this news story is and becomes obviously nationwide, and everyone gets set and everything. How many young girls sign up for football clubs after this? How many parents take their girls down and say, "Let's start kicking the football around." I think it'd be a direct correlation between. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. football's a really yeah. popular sport for both young boys and girls in this country anyway. And actually, I'm pretty sure it's the most popular participation sport for up till about the age of 14 or 15. Or it used to be. Maybe it's basketball now, or maybe basketball's it's basketball. crunching the numbers. Well, I mean, well. you think back to when Stephen Adams was drafted into the NBA and was playing on a team that was actually a playoff team and potentially a finals contender. And the flight, like the, the, the booming of basketball in New Zealand in the last 15 years. 10 to 15 years has been, well, 10 years has been Stephen Adams yeah, related, yeah. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. So when you see someone like this, like Macy Fraser, get a contract over in the US, you'd hope to see the same effect. I don't know, like, I mean, if it was a, if it, like, the, I'm, I'm not criticising women's sport here, but if it was the male equivalent and we had a, a men's footballer go and get picked up by a Premier League club and whatnot, well, then again, that's what's going on with Chris Wood. Well, that's co- and also Sarpreet, remember, he signed with Bayern Munich, just he doesn't play anymore. He, play. He, play anymore. he should come back and play for Auckland FC for a season. Maybe he will. Um, Champions League results today. Miles speaking about this as well. I'm, I'm still stunned. Barcelona. I mean, both Barcelona, they were they were up 4-2 on aggregate at home. Sure, yeah. they get a player sent off, but you'd expect them to hold out, wouldn't you? Well, you'd think. If they're a good side, PSG a good enough side. scorched them 4-1. And then Atletico Madrid never concede any goals, and they concede four mm. to Dortmund. Can either of these two teams win it? Dortmund or PSG playing in one semi-final? I'll, I'll just quickly say, I'm actually not too shocked that Dortmund won, only because Dortmund, I think, is similar to Liverpool, where 
their home atmospheres, and look, I mean... Yeah, yeah it's yeah. true, actually. Yeah, 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 I, yellow I think, wall, yeah, right. I think the home atmosphere really gives them an edge in these in these ties. And Atletico, as much as they're a pretty well-coached side, they've been a bit up and down for the last year or two. Barcelona's the one that just gobsmacked I mean, they're not the Barcelona that had Leo Messi. They're not. But they won the uh, La Liga last year, or the, you know, last season they won it. You know, they, since Xavi... I mean, he's leaving at the end of the year. Maybe that has something to do with it, but um, since he's taken over, they've been a good side. But I would think... Um, I would think PSG get through over Dortmund. I think they're just too good. Who and wins it tomorrow out of the Man City, uh, Real and, and Bayern Arsenal? Uh, Man City, Bayern go through. Both those, both the home teams go through? Yeah. And that's one semi-final, and the winner of that's going to play PSG or it's Dortmund? Gonna be Man, it's going to be Man City, PSG, which is like Qatar versus the UAE, essentially, isn't it? Now, I started the show by saying, look, Rory McIlroy offered the best part of a billion New Zealand dollars, and if the old employers came back and, and stuffed that in front of me, well, I'm sorry, dear leader, but I think the question really is for you, Sean, is if Radio New Zealand came back and offered you that, would you stay with the platform or would you leave? It's a hell of a lot of money to turn down. Look, none of us are ever going to be in the position, people, to to have this, ever have to answer this question. I think it's probably a lot easier to make that decision if you're Rory McIlroy, because he's probably got a hundred, couple of hundred mil in the bank anyway, hasn't he? Yeah. Tiger turned it down. He turned down the best part of it, a billion dollars. There was no way Tiger could take it because there's a guy who... Rory's a bit, a bit different. Tiger's the face well, no, of golf. Rory has said that he's hated Live Golf yeah, the whole... Yeah, it, but it'd be, it'd be like... Um, I don't know, what's another sport? It'd be, I don't know, it'd be like Michael Jordan doing something similar with Tom. I think people hate Tom Brady, I guess. The, the thing with Tiger, Roger Federer, him doing something similar on the tennis circuit, you just couldn't. As much as Tiger's had his indiscretions in the past, he's still so... Well, he was just rooting around a lot on his well, missus, yes. okay? You can call them whatever you he, want, but that's what they were. Yes. He, um... I love how the commentators all do that. Oh, they do talk about Tiger and hush tones yeah. and indiscretions. Well, this is the thing. They, they, everyone loves him. The they American media love him like so much. Dory was, mate. So, if he was to do that, it would just be so detrimental to his image. That's well, I don't think it could get any, any worse for Tiger, but... Well, do these guys care about that, Really? Do they really care about image when it comes to this? I mean, I think John Rahm and Brendan Telford will join us at half past three. John Rahm, he's, he's, he's got it, found a couple of quotes from Rahm saying, I wouldn't go and play Live Golf for a billion dollars. <laughs> well, he did it for a hundred million in the end, did didn't he? Um, I, no, Rory, Rory doesn't need to take... It's a bit like the old Dave Chappelle quote that what's... Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but what's really the difference between, you know, 20 million and 60 million? Is there really... Like, there's a difference, but... I'd like to know, mate. But really... <laughs> There's not really, though, is there? So if you're Rory McIlroy and you've got a close to $100 million already in the bank, do you really need to take nearly a billion dollars? I mean, it'd be spectacular. You're the, the family line for generations is sorted, but is it really worth it when you consider just the... Re- but the, at the, okay, then you go. I I'm just go, don't going, get this. I'm I still going in circles. Right, to be fair, I'm going in circles I don't get this, though, because Liv and the PGA are going to join yeah. t- at some stage, so aren't they? what's going on? Uh, Joey Manu, finally... And I can't wait to talk to Sir Steve Hansen, Shag, in about an hour, less than an hour from now about this. Where's he going to play? Probably fullback, I think. A Nuno. Oh, fullback or centre. Oh, he can't play. You can't do a Roger with him, mate. This is rugby. No, Roger played second five. Different, Make it div- simple. Different, different positions. Make it simple. Put different him on the positions. wing or play him at fullback to start It's probably with. fullback. Can he kick the ball? Because you got to if you're playing rugby. Well, you've got to if you're playing fullback, yeah. This is the softest landing of all. I, I you know, I, I know that he's probably getting paid trillions of dollars and everything, and he'll probably come back to the NRL at some stage. Maybe he'll come back to the NRL at some stage. I kind of think it's a bit of a soft-out option, isn't it? No. Although he's won everything in league, isn't he? Well, he's doing the Roger in the sense that he's... But he's doing it a bit more covertly, where he's going into rugby to get into the All Blacks and probably try and win the next World well, Cup. Well, the Wallabies, who does he play for? No, no, he's a Kiwi, mate. He'll play for the All Blacks. He's de- you, Really? I would be shocked if he played for the Wallabies. I'd be genuinely shocked. Listen, this isn't this isn't this isn't a bloke who's born in New Zealand but moved over to Wales when he was four or five and grew up there. This is a bloke who lived and grew up in New Zealand, then went over to play in the NRL. I don't I do not think he'd play for how, Australia. How big is this? If he did play for Australia, I'd be shocked. How big a slap in the face is it for rugby league that one of their stars of the NRL is going over to rugby? Um Is it a slap in the face? Not really. I mean, look, Joey Manu is a big name, but I don't like. I, I don't think he's the. He's not the biggest star in the game. There's probably five or six other guys that can certainly like. The, thing, the brilliant thing about the NRL, there are th- twenty to thirty either superstars or potential to be superstars. It's not as if you're the Wallabies and you're losing your only good player. Like I think the NRL is going to be fine. Caitlin Clark, number one draft pick, women's NBA basketball. And the moment that Caitlin signed for the Indiana Fever yesterday. Her singlets sold out. Isn't that incredible? 
all of them sold out in India. And how big is basketball there? How big a splash is she going to make in the WNBA? What kind of impact both on and off the court? And why does she only get paid over four years, half of what LeBron earns in a week? Play-by-play caller Pat Boylan joined us on the program. Can I say that she's bringing her own fever to the Indiana fever? You can say that. In fact, I would say that's probably the most accurate way to put it. It's just been startling to see, you know, some of the numbers that have come with the Caitlin Clark experience. The For the second straight year, the national championship game on the women's side had more viewers than the national championship game on the men's side. And the women's game here in the U.S., it really has been growing over the last few years. But what we've seen lately and what we've seen from games that Caitlin Clark's been involved in are just frankly astonishing and I don't even think the most ardent supporter of women's athletics here in the U.S. could have expected a scenario where the women's game is outdrawing the men's game or at least it has the last couple of years on the collegiate level so now it's time for her to turn pro and as the announcer here for uh, the Indiana Fever where she went number one overall too um, we're thrilled to be capturing some of that momentum here in Indiana. Sold out of her jersey already already <laughs> Correct. Yes. Uh, her jerseys, I think, sold out within minutes. And that's kind of been our experience with everything. You know, the Fever and the Indiana Pacers, which is the NBA team, um, they're under the same umbrella here in Indiana. So it's an 18,000 seat arena that the Pacers play in. And the moment that Caitlin Clark declared for the WNBA draft, even before the Fever drafted her, you saw just ticket sales go through the roof. Um, we had all of a sudden thousands of people calling us trying to purchase tickets when we hadn't even drafted her yet and for a WNBA game to sell out a 17 18,000 seat arena that's pretty rare and that's what we're expecting to do here on opening night which is about a month away you know I watched the Reggie Miller I think it was winning time um, the documentary of Indiana and the Pacers versus the Knicks and didn't know of course living here in New Zealand how big a sport and how popular it was in Indiana but it's your number one game isn't it Yeah, it is our number one game. You know, here in the U.S., there's not – I don't know if there's one consensus top sport. American football might be it if you had to pick. But you've got some areas of the country that are baseball uh, fanatics. You've got some areas that are maybe more into hockey. American football is kind of ubiquitous in the U.S. But in Indiana, basketball is king. And that goes from the Indiana Pacers, which you're talking about, to the collegiate teams here. Uh, down to the high school and some of the youth levels. So I think there's a lot of people here that appreciate what Caitlin Clark does and appreciate how she plays, maybe more than the average fan base might. And so I think that's another, you know, kind of cool dynamic is she's coming to a basketball hotbed. She's coming to an area that is really passionate about this sport. Pat Boylan, who's the play-by-play caller for the Indiana Fever with us. I'm looking at her salary and I'm thinking, you know, LeBron earns double that every week. Uh, Why is there such a disparity? Well, I think a lot of this is the growth in the women's game that still is going to come. And I think it's important to note that a WNBA season is about half the length of an NBA season and that this is a salary that she's going to make for four months. And it's also very important to note that she's got sponsorships and she's got money that comes through numerous other partnerships that she has that's on top of this. And while the college game has changed significantly, it is money that she's making uh, the 70 some thousand dollars that she wasn't making as a college athlete, um, the salary, the, the maximum salary a WNBA player can make is almost four times this. So the way that the WNBA works is that a rookie salary is far less than a player who's maybe uh, in year seven or eight. She will get there. But I think this it's an area that shows that growth is still necessary in the women's game to get that number higher. And the thing is, the popularity that Caitlin Clark brings and everything that has come um, with all the viewership and the eyeballs, that's going to help do that. The 70,000, it might not jump out as a lot, but if you go back six or seven years ago, that number was significantly less. And I have a sense that, uh, you know, if, if we're talking here again on your show in five or six years, that number will be significantly higher. That's our podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to listen to the entire show, one till four, Monday to Friday, 
Download the Platform app and via Platform Plus you can go back and listen to whatever shows over however many weeks at your leisure, at your listening pleasure. Platform Plus. First thing to do though is download the Platform app. Devlin. You better believe it. The Platform.